Hello, everybody. Today is Friday, July 17th, 2020. Uh, my name is Luis Hess. I am here to give you a quick update as to what's going on in the road of immigration. As um, lots of ha has surprisingly happened this week, so thought the easiest way, to, rather than sending out a mass email, is just giving an update live. So first thing to note is that Immigration Customs and ICE itself has rescinded its rule requiring international students to take in in-person classes this fall. Uh, earlier last week, the Trump administration announced that in order for international students to remain here in the United States, they would need to have to, they would be required to take at least one course in person. Uh, this was in a turnabout from earlier this year where people could actually still maintain their international student status uh, while taking classes online. Now, normally, the, the normal regulations state that international students must uh, must maintain an in-person type education in order to keep their F1 international student visa status. However, that was that rule was suspended as part of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, which is still ongoing. So, uh, thankfully, uh, international students can at least stay here. Uh, during this time, now that may the requirement or the uh, the requirement that students have to take one in-person in class may come into effect once the pandemic goes away, but we'll leave that for a future time. Uh, and then earlier this week, President Trump had announced that he will sign an executive order to change immigration laws to create a merit-based system of immigration. Um, that remains to be seen since immigration law is traditionally set by Congress, uh, requires both House and Senate to pass a bill and for it to be signed into law. So the, questioning, the question is now is what's the president's legal ability to change immigration laws without going through the legislative process? So a lot to be determined. Um, but similarly, the president had announced that he would like he will create a road to citizenship for DACA recipients. Uh, and that this will include protections and a passport citizenship, but not amnesty. So this remains to be seen since this executive order has yet to be released. Um, also this week, a federal appeals court have ruled that the Trump administration cannot withhold grants from California sanctuary cities. Um, the court out in San Francisco, California, had, pre had ruled earlier this week that the federal government cannot block police funds from cities with sanctuary policies. These policies usually preclude local law enforcement from enforced immigration law or share certain information with federal law enforcement. Uh, this ruling does not extend out of California and conflicts with the ruling from the Second Circuit in New York. Uh, though this decision does create a circuit split, that is a Disagreement between the different courts. The Supreme Court has denied a request to review a similar case in California sanctuary laws last month. And it, of interest is that this week detained immigrants must decide whether to separate their families. Um, specifically in June, one federal judge had ordered the release of detained children in light of the pandemic. The federal government has interpreted this order as not also requiring me to release to the parents. Now families have until today to decide whether to keep their children in detention with them or release their children to outside guardians. Um, a decision, a federal judge in Washington, D.C. to decide whether families must be released, but that decision is not likely to occur today. And finally, the U.S. will almost certainly restrict border crossings for another month. On June 14th, the Trump administration said that it was almost certain that border crossings at Canada and Mexico borders would be limited to only essential travel through August 21st. If not extended, the current restrictions are set to end on July 21st. Um, and then it is, thankfully, the U.S. will soon resume visa services and embassies abroad. On Monday, the State Department announced that U.S. embassies will soon resume visa services, but did not provide details as to which locations would be open. Uh, routine visa services have been suspended in all U.S. embassies since March 20th of this year. 
And even after visa services resume, President Trump's restriction on many types of visas will continue throughout the end of the year, such as with respect to L1 visas, H1Bs, H2s, and J1s, but of course that's all subject to change. And right now the top U.S. companies have asked the Trump administration not to rescind or remove or repeal DACA. Uh, executives from top companies, including Google, Target, General Motors, and Apple, have penned a letter urging the executive branch, that is President Trump at the moment, to leave the DACA program in place. The letters argued that in, ending DACA would create uh, create harm to the economy and being able to recover. Now, all of this, all of these uh, policies, all these changes that I've discussed, can change at a moment's notice. Uh, but if you have any questions, if there's something that you would like to know more about, please give us a call, 281-205-8540, or shoot us an email at info at That is I-N-F-O at L-U-I-S-H-E-S-S-L-A-W.com. And we hope to talk to you soon. Thank you very much.